My name's Adam, um, 50, going on 51, and uh, here diagnosed was 2018 on Christmas Eve. It was a bit of a surprise. It was um, a reflective moment. Uh, uh, I sort of didn't, I didn't panic and, and, you know, all of that. I sort of felt like I was supported by my GP that had, had the job of diagnosing me. And, um, you know, I sort of went home and I actually told my dad, who's quite elderly, but I don't know whether he really took it in or not, but I felt the need to tell somebody. And, uh, and then I rang a friend and, um, yeah, I was, I was okay, you know. Um, I think uh, living in a time where we do now, you know, where the treatments are great and there's less stigma, maybe still too much, but less stigma. Um, you know, I sort of wasn't, wasn't so concerned and I was given really good sort of support by this GP. I don't think he'd uh, diagnosed anybody before with HIV and, um, but he straight away sort of started to get into researching the best place to send me for, you know, for a specialist and, um, so that was, yeah, that was, it was a supportive feeling, you know, um, situation, um, which I'm very grateful for, yeah. It was a, um, about as good as you could get it, I guess. It was an odd thing to have on Christmas Eve. Um, I'll carry you that. Um, but, you know, I, I was lined up with a uh, specialist appointment on that day, so that as soon as the new year came, I was ready to go off and, and you know, have further tests done and see people. And um, so, you know, I felt, I felt at, at ease, yeah, with that. First and foremost, uh, good health, as far as I can keep that going. Um, and I don't mean just related to being HIV positive, but in general, as an aging person, um, I think one of the reasons I've struggled a bit with turning 50 was that realization that I'm past the halfway mark, you know, uh, for, for most people anyway. And, um, and you know, that's, yeah, it's quite confronting in, in that sense. Um, but as far as, you know, moving forward, I, I've sort of figured out that, look, I need my health to be able to do the things that I want to do. Um, you know, uh, I'm currently sort of starting to, to put together a plan to lose some weight and um, get back to sort of a certain level of fitness that I was a few years ago. And um, and that's just for general wellbeing, you know. And I think um, for somebody like me who's come from a background of, um, you know, some mental health challenges as well, um, with sort of political depression and, and bad anxiety disorder. Um, you know, I hope that I can continue as I am at the moment, which is, you know, in a not too bad a place, um, sort of feeling a little bit at peace, um, more so than I have been in the past. And, uh, you know, being able to focus on, on well-being. Um, and I think that's everything, you know, for whatever time you've got left, it's, uh, it's important to sort of feel uh, well, you know, obviously to be able to do what I want to do, you know. Um, and as far as what I want to do, it's, you know, really just keep living, living well. Um, yeah, look, I've been through some other, some other challenges as well to do with addiction and that sort of thing. And I'm grateful that that's, that time has passed. And it's definitely important to me to make sure that that does stay as a past thing. Um, it's not going to help the health moving forward. It's not going to help, you know, living well. Um, but I feel, I feel positive about that. Yeah, it, it's challenging. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it is it is challenging because any one of those things alone can be all in, all encompassing. You know, um, for me, yeah, the mental health point of view, I've started to well, I straight away made a decision to get more involved in the HIV community, um, and that was for my mental health as well as just general knowledge, etc. Um, you know, I didn't know that many people who were positive uh, well actually i do know quite a few people who are positive but nobody that i'm sort of uh you know particularly close to as far as close friendships etc so um yeah i wanted to make sure that i was connected in ways with whatever in however way is possible you know to, to keep that feeling of support and community um as far as being positive hiv positive you know i look i you know i've got really good health um supports around me and that makes me feel positive about it. Um, you know, I've dealt already with a few, uh, you know, HIV related issues along the way in the last couple of years. And, you know, that's always challenging. But again, I see it as, as you put it, it is part of a chronic illness and hopefully I can keep managing that in a way that is, you know, remains 
not it's there, but it's you know not forefront always um, in my healthcare. And as far as my addiction years go, you know I um, you know my addiction and usage led to behaviour which led to me becoming HIV positive. Um, I was in a pretty reckless state, uh, which a lot of people do get into when when they're using certain drugs. Um, and you know, in that mindset, I wasn't worried at all about becoming positive or you know any effects on myself. Um, so yeah, it's sort of uh, something that I'm determined to, as I said, I work on all the time and make sure that I'm doing what I need to to, to have that stay in its box and back where it was and, and no longer around, you know. But certainly it's been um, part of my journey. Um, and you know, I'm happy to talk about that because I see, I see now a lot of people going through similar journeys, you know. Um, so uh, it's, it's something which again, by helping and supporting others and being involved with others, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's a feeling of gratitude and hopefully, you know, keep that positive vibe going, yeah. I guess it means to me, you know, stigma is where I'm differentiated and, you know, called out for a particular part of my, you know, being, um, you know, whether it be HIV positive, whether it be, um, you know, having had an addictive background, an addiction in my background, whether it be a gay male, you know, to this day, there's still, there's still differentiation occurs. Um, and, you know, unfortunately that can, or well, it can make me feel pretty, pretty, you know, unhappy with myself, but, um, but also it doesn't help for people to understand these things properly. Um, you know, with HIV in, in Australia anyway, um, you know, I, I don't feel a lot of stigma attached to it these days, but I must admit there's still certain people and places that I'm private about it and I don't talk about it. I mean, I'm here doing an interview and I don't know where that will go, therefore pretty comfortable with being open about it, you know, um, where, where it's necessary or where it comes into part of my story. But, um, you know, in fact, just at work today, I sort of was about to say something about doing this interview with you and I sort of thought, you know, I don't think I need to tell these people what this is about, you know, um, they just don't need to know. There was a little bit of concern that maybe, yeah, it would it would cause a differentiation, you know, in the relationship I've got with them. Um, you know, I think there's still a long way to go, having said that, especially around gay males, uh, substance abuse and HIV together. Um, I think there's still a lot of stigma around that. People, people just don't understand you know, how that can happen. Um, and one of the, part of my story has been, you know, with various people in my life um, being being quite supportive and, and, you know, trying their best to be open-minded about things, but, but you know, still trying to work out how this all happened. You know, how did it happen to somebody like you? You know, um, that type of question. And, um, you know, the answer is it just is. <laughs> um, but yeah, stigma is something that, you know, obviously affects mental health. Um, you know, to be stigmatised, you know, can really, can really hurt. And, uh, you know, I, you know, at the moment, I'm also sort of in a situation where I'm battling, like being, being overweight compared to what I wanted to be, you know, as far as a healthy weight. And there's some stigma there as well, you know. And so it's another form of, you know, fighting. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel nice when you feel it, you know. Um, and it's something that uh, I guess through my experiences, being HIV positive, um, particularly, um, I try to sort of be aware to not stigmatise other people um, for whatever that is. You know. um, a good example is um, is where I go to my specialist clinic for my HIV, um, you know, uh, treatment. You might say, and um, I mean, obviously, that's just one part of of you know, one disease, one issue that they will work around and be diagnosing. But um, they've been great, and I think it's important that this you know, happens where, okay, I'm there to talk about HIV related issues, but you know, they take a, a very broad approach of well-being as far as you know, how you're going mentally, uh, you know, how's your family life, all the things that are relevant to how I'm feeling. Um, so that's a, a positive, you know, uh, you know, situation. I've been, Probably unlucky to really only have a couple of situations where I've felt stigmatised, particularly in getting care. And you know, one was through a um, 
uh, Chinese herbalist and doctor who I was getting acupuncture with and uh, I hadn't disclosed in the past that I was positive. I didn't need to. There was no requirement for me to do so. And then this day I did particularly, I just sort of let it slip out with something that must have been talking about medications. And, uh, you know, the answer is put the pen down and looked at me and said, oh, I can't treat you. And, you know, I got out of there and I rang, I rang a friend. I was really shaken by that, you know. Um, somebody who's got quite high regard in the community is, is known as a specialist in what he does. And yet still, you know, sort of put me in that situation. It wasn't even done particularly nicely, you know. Um, so those sort of situations are luckily, I think, rare, but uh, not a very nice experience. Um, and, you know, any form of stigma can, can go along that route, you know. Um, as far as care in general goes, um, you know, I think it's, it's great these days. You could, I was just reflecting on going and getting blood tests done for something completely unrelated to HIV. But, um, you know, the people who do that are really great at sort of not, you know, differentiating in any way what you do. And it may be a little part of the experience of, you know, well-being. But um, I think it's kind of, it's nice to go somewhere like that and just not have to worry about it and not, and not have to feel any, you know, any differentiation. There are a few people who, you know, still can't quite understand how I became HIV positive. Not the, the mechanics of it, but uh, more, you know, somebody who's seen as, you know, relatively, you know, looking after his well-being and, and relatively intelligent and relatively switched on to things. You know, how did that happen? And um, yeah, that's that's an interesting sort of situation to still be facing, but. Um, a lot of the time it's not meant to be harmful, you know, it's just a different approach, yeah. I think, um, I think education, so, you know, sharing knowledge is obviously a big one. Uh, knowledge that, you know, can be shared in an easy way that's seen as relevant to, you know, everyday sort of situations. Um, I do some work with the Public Speakers Bureau through here and um, it's been really, you know, quite edifying to see people in certain situations and that uh, we presented to, you know, who really took on board information. You could tell that they were sort of not in awe so much, but they were they were totally taken by what they were learning, you know, and, and the hope is that they took that away and took it into, you know, other aspects of their lives. But I think it's nice when you feel that, you know, and it may be in a medical situation where you have to explain something to do with your medication or or, you know, um, your HIV status is relevant. You know, um, I guess the key is, again, that the person has, you know, up-to-date, relevant information. Um, U equals U, you know, uh, whatever the medical side of things like that go. You know, I think, um, yeah, that, that makes me feel better. Um, you know, for me, it's been really important to be involved with Living Positive Victoria um, because, um, well, it's just a community that is all about educating and about sharing knowledge. And, um, you know, that's been really important because I've been able to take some of that to use in my own situations and, you know, uh, to, to represent myself. I, I feel good about that, you know, I mean, uh, Jokes aside around turning 50 itself, um, you know, it's important as a, as a bit of a turning point in life and I think a bit of a turning point in, you know, my attitude towards certain parts of life that, yes, I am over 50 and, um, you know, it's great to have that specific support in place, um, knowing that the program exists. Um, you're right in saying I haven't yet, you know, become involved as far as attend many, many things or, you know, do any of the activities yet, but I look forward to them. Um, I guess it's an opportunity to meet um, people in a like sort of situation. Um, you know, it's just another connection and connection's so important to feel, to feel good about yourself, I think, you know. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I look forward to, to that connection happening. Um, I just see it as the more of this stuff that, you know, I can get, um, hopefully the, the more sort of uh, peaceful I'll be, the more, I'll feel comfortable within myself. Um, and you know, it's an interesting, interesting thought of, you know, I've got a, I've got a parent, my dad in a, in a nursing home and he's 40 years older than me. So I'm not talking about that for worrying about it for me now, but it might one day be of sort of relevance, you know, in 10, 20 years time. And um, thinking back to, you know, somebody being put into that situation, 
it would be great to have a program around that where at a certain age you can still get support and you can still get connection. So whilst that might be quite a long way down the track, it's sort of a nice thought to have those sort of things in place. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly there's a lot, a lot of life to be lived before that. So, um, you know, in the meantime, just generally getting, yeah, getting out and, and, um, and feeling informed. And I think, you know, that's one of the good things about well, in Australia and during my diagnosis process, et cetera, is that the information is very readily available, um, which is you know, something to be grateful for. Um, so if this can, can, can help keeping me informed, then that's even better. Yep. I, I think um, it's a great question. I think, you know, First of all, sort of establishing connections where, where you feel comfortable with that. I mean, not everyone likes to do the same activities or the, the same style of, you know, interaction. So finding something that is, you know, comfortable for you is important. Um, you know, we're all, yeah, very different human individuals and, you know, um, you don't want to be sort of stuck or, or railroading yourself into something that, you know, just isn't right for you, you know. Um, so I think that's important. Um, it's also important to, for me anyway, and I think for most people in this position to, you know, as, as you do age, things do change physically and mentally and particularly physically at this stage. And, um, you know, uh, again, to understand what goes on and what might go on for me is really important. And I think, you know, uh, I would say to other people, you know, ask your questions, ask the doctor, ask the nurses, the people who, you know, you're dealing with in relation to HIV in particular, um, you know, and if you're not satisfied with the answers, don't be afraid to keep asking or to keep, you know, raising these issues because we are entitled to, you know, a fair bit of information and um, we're entitled to be able to make our own choices and decisions based on information that we get. So I think it's really important <clears throat> to probably establish those things. It's um, something that, you, you know, you consider as you, as you get a little bit older as to where you might want to, you might want to settle to live or whatever. For me, that also would involve, well, what access do I have to the supports that I've been building around me, you know? Um, and, you know, in most cases, I think the answer would be no if you said, well, do you want to move away from all of this? You know, um, sure, I'd love to go and live in Queensland in the sun or something like that, but maybe I will. But, uh, but you know, in the meantime, um, yeah, it's important to sort of feel, feel uh, nurtured, I guess. Um, and, you know, Aging, I guess, is, this time also is like a time where maybe it's a career change or maybe it's towards the end of a career or something like that. Um, you know, again, is sort of having some direction so that you can feel good about where you're going and not just lost in this abyss of, you know, this sort of age group. Um, but I think, you know, from the point of view of what, for instance, Living Positive Victoria can offer is... Um, is definitely, you know, those easy, easily accessible uh, connecting points and, you know, ways to stay involved. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to those things, yeah.